Hello everybody. Hi. My name is Darren. I'm Graham. And I have seen at some point, well you've seen at some point in your life and I saw the other night, Silence of the Lambs. Ooh. Ooh. That's it. People seem to like that film. For yeah. good reason. It's a classic, isn't it? It's it one is of those kind of go-to films if you want to think of like, you know, an old Fat women being worn classic. as a dress. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoilers for this one. <laughs> uh... Old yeah. school, what? Sorry, it's just just one of those old school films that everyone kind of well, relates to. It's for... like nineteen ninety one. What's going on? There? Well, speak for yourself, Grandpa. Um, Kids you... born in nineteen ninety one are like twenty now or whatever. <laughs> They're a bit older than twenty. Twenty one or whatever. Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, do you like the film Silence of the Lambs? Yes, I've only seen it a couple of times. Once when I was That's much the younger. The go to film. Only seen it twice. But everybody knows it. Is what I'm saying. Everyone knows it. I'm really warm. Uh huh. Um, uh, yeah, I did like it. Yeah, the, well, what's not really... to like? Exactly. Is that a question? <laughs> uh, the music. I like the music. That's interesting. You say the music because uh, <laughs> off I go. There we go. It's by uh, Howard <laughs> Shaw. Who, when I was first introduced to Howard Shaw, I knew him as the guy that did the music to Lord of the Rings. And then I started watching David Cronenberg movies, and he's the guy that always does Cronenberg's movies, music, movies in. He always does the music in David Cronenberg's movies, and I thought, this is strange, the guy that does the big Lord of the Rings soundtrack mm. is doing these kind of weird little creepy movies. And then I saw that Howard Shaw did the music to this, and it suddenly felt more... Suddenly Howard Shaw was the guy that does creepy f music, All right. and he just happened to do Lord of the Rings. Interesting? Not really, but it filled up some time. Not um, interesting. It's not interesting. No. Um, Old news. I'll tell you what I, I like about Silence of the Lambs. Well, I, I, I didn't ask, but go for it. I if just you like, I suppose. I mean, if, if, if that's how the conversation's going. Yeah, I just, 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 just chat about it. just want to talk about. Yeah. So, so what did you like about Well, there's the a character in it called Multiple Migs that I talk about all the time, and nobody ever knows who he is. Like, I always reference Multiple Migs. I've literally never, ever heard you say Multiple Migs. No, what happens is I if say I things that you a... don't understand, and you ignore them straight away. Hmm. So, I was actually talking to you about Multiple Migs for about an hour this morning. <laughs> multiple Migs is the guy that's like a few cells down from Hannibal that flicks jizz in her face as he's walking away. Oh, as okay. she's walking away, she being close. I remember the moment, but I don't remember... Yeah, his name's Multiple Migs. The gentleman. So I talk about multiple... I reference Multiple Migs quite a lot, and the jizz flicking thing. And people just look at me you like... You do reference the jizz flicking thing quite a lot. See? But I you just I... don't remember the Multiple Migs bit? Okay, alright, alright. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so more people need to watch Silence of the Lambs, just so when I start talking about Multiple Migs, they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, on your reference. Yeah, so I just think the whole film's a masterpiece, really. I really like it. And in one of the things, every regard. What's a ma what part of it is a masterpiece? Like all of it. Camera, you know, the That's kind of the definition of a masterpiece. Oh yeah, I suppose. So. <laughs> uh, the best thing to do there would have been you to try to criticize it and I defend it, but yeah. you didn't do that, then. Well, I, I think that I think there's too 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 much blood. You think there's too much blood? I think there's, there's actually not that much blood in it, the, except the, the scene. Where a spoiler alert, Hannibal escapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but that that's one. kind of good because the whole film's been kind of tame, and not in terms of mood or tone or um, subject matter, but in terms of violence. Until Hannibal breaks out, then all sort of hell breaks loose. Exactly. Was, well, why is that a bad thing? That contrasts the, the that emphasizes silence beforehand. Well, almost. it just really silence sort of picks up Hannibal's character, doesn't it? Because he seems like a still, still silent person. You know, he's standing there all the time. He talks, yeah. he, and then suddenly he's going apeshit and biting people's faces off and whipping them with the. Or battering them with the truncheons and stuff. I love that scene. I think that scene where Hannibal escapes the cell is one of my all-time favorite scenes in anything ever. Wow. I know, and I, I particularly I like the bit obviously where he handcuffs the guy to the bar and then bites at the guy's face. But I particularly like the bit where the Enjoy whole chaos. It. Yeah, I do. Where everything's everyone's dead, and ha and it cuts back to like a, a high angle, and Hannibal's like looking up and you see the blood down his face, and he's just kind of listening to him with the music because he's got music on. I just really like that scene, and then it, like you hear yeah. one of the bodies go like, Ugh, and he's like, oh, ready for you, agent. Whatever the agent's guy is. Where have I seen that today? I sent it. It was a Snapchat if you need to open it today. Hmm. That'll be why. Um, it's fresh in my mind, you know. Well, that's good. Well, I'm glad I prepared you. <laughs> uh, it actually just threw you. <laughs> it really did. Yeah, so I really like... Oh, yeah, and it's got some really weird cameos in that you forget about until you watch it. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, suddenly someone walked past the screen and you think, like, was that George Romero that I just saw wander past the screen for, like, three seconds? Rewind, pause. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, was that... Uh... Chris Isaacs, I can see. Oh, yeah, it seems like it is. Is that the headmaster from Malcolm in the Middle? Um, <laughs> slightly less esteemed. All, <laughs> yeah. all the big names. <laughs> <laughs> you know those three. George Romero, Chris... George Romero from the cult movie director. Chris Isaacs, the one-hit wonder. And the, the headmaster guy from Malcolm in the Middle. All the A-listers. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Only the finest in the background of this one. <laughs> yeah, but the thing I noticed... I've seen it like a trillion times. I've read the book and stuff. Um, the thing I noticed this time is that... Uh, Everyone bangs on about how great ha uh, Anthony Hopkins is as Hannibal, which, which they're right to do so. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone bangs on about how good Clarice is, or uh, Jodie Foster is as Clarice, oh, yeah, which yeah. they're right. But 
I don't think Ted Levin gets enough credit as Buffalo Bill. Well, do you not think? No. For a start, if I said Ted Levin to most people, they'd look at me as though I just said multiple mix. Like, <laughs> don't know who the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> and secondly, yeah. these days if Ted Levin pops up in the things I've seen him in anyway, he's always like a kind of gruff, um, sort of authoritative figure. Like, he's a prison guard in Shutter Island. He's like a... I think he's a police guy or something, an American gangster. You know, he like plays military type people right whereas in this he's a skinny guy who tucks his cock between his legs and dances to goodbye horses mm. so it's a complete like it's it was almost a sh it was one of those where it's like a shock when i realized you know that it was the same person like i knew ted levin is an older man uh, as what he is now and then you kind of imdb him and go hang on that's uh, buffalo bill jesus <laughs> so i just think that's a really iconic and he's really creepy like mm -hmm. like hannibal's creepy obviously because he eats people but he's actually he's, he's also likable that's what's yeah, yeah you know yeah. like he's funny and i mean he can be horrible but I don't know, something about Anthony Hopkins, I guess, the way he plays it's him. It's charisma, is the point. Yeah, I guess so. But, like, the bit where, like, you know, um, Buffalo Bill's got the what's-a-face down the well, and he's like, it puts the lotion on skin. It's like, it's not just what he's saying, it's like how he's, it's his voice, you know, yeah, it's kind yeah, of, yeah. it's like, it's sort of high, but not, and it's just, the whole thing is just really, so I think, I think Ted Levin's performance in that film is one of the most underrated psycho performances of all time. Just saying. That I've seen, anyway. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Very John Glenn's in it as well. John, which is uh, which one's John Glenn? He plays uh, Crawford, who is the character that Morpheus plays in the Hannibal TV show. Oh, and right. also, what I thought is uh, there are obviously, like to my knowledge, three people that have played Hannibal now, with Brian Cox um, in Manhunter, Anthony Hopkins in these, and Mads Mikkelsen in the TV one. You know how, like with Bond, everyone says like, "Who's your favorite Bond? Which is your favorite Bond?" Mm. With with Hannibal, I kind of like them all equally. I like what every every single one of them has done something completely different to the others. I mean, obviously, Anthony Hopkins has done the worst one in Hannibal and Red Dragon. Mm. But if we ignore those two, although I do quite like Hannibal as rubbish as it is. Um, yeah, if we just take those three, they're all really good. They're all completely different. And the one that I noticed is that I think uh, Anthony Hopkins one is funnier than the others, particularly in this film. Right. Like when he's taking the piss out of Jodie Foster's character. I know you meant to be on her side and feeling bad for it because he's saying really horrible things. But he's saying it in quite a funny way. <laughs> yeah. He seems to be enjoying himself. <laughs> yeah, sort yeah. of psychologically tormenting her. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. It's uh I, I thought as well, like it was kind of I hate the word brave when it comes to actors because how how brave can it really be? You pretend to be somebody you're not. But like Anthony Hopkins was quite an established actor by that point, you know, he'd done everything that he'd done, Elephant Man and whatnot. And Jonathan Demi's not the most famous director. So to sort of sign on to a film about a guy who tucks his cock between his legs and does a dance and you play somebody who eats people and blah blah blah, it's like quite a big decision, you know, mm -hmm. like that could have gone horribly wrong for his yeah. career. Yeah. But uh yeah. Without a proper read through of the script. Well, he did read it through. He said that um, he thought it was going to be a fairy tale story or, you know, a kid's story because it's called Silence of the Lambs. Oh, right. It was very much not a yeah, kid's yeah. film. I think he was confused, though. Yeah, and Brian Cox was apparently annoyed because he'd obviously played <coughs> Hannibal Lecter in Manhunter and he didn't get to play Hannibal Lecter in the sequel, Silence of the Lambs, and him and Anthony Hopkins shared the same agent. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so Silence of the Lambs is really good. Shocking news there. Yeah, classic yeah. film is a classic. Interesting. Hmm. Um, to add? Uh, yeah, um, I, think, I think the iconography of... Um, Buffalo Bill with his cock between his legs, as you say. The iconography of that one specific shot. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's kind of you know, it's it's made its way to pop culture, hasn't it? You Specifically, know, and... looks too. Well, and and the Halloween costume that you won't let me go as. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I was thinking originally it was Jane Silent Bob, but it's I think it's Clerks too because I've not seen Jane Silent Bob. I doubt it, but. Because in Clerks Two, Clerks Two is it's like a it's like it's like a return to to all that stuff, and after a, a long stint of not ha releasing any films with those guys, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Do you just tune out. Do you just stop listening? There's a bit where I get confused in what you're talking, and I think I'm not going to find out what you're saying now. So I'll wait until you finish and ask you to clarify. Just move on. Okay. Uh, anything else to say? <laughs> no, obviously not. Oh. So you're not a Hannibal fanboy. Yeah, I'm a Hannibal fanboy. <laughs> okay, I don't think you yeah. are, but go on. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just letting you take the lead on this one, yeah. All right. Ooh, I'm sorry. In what way are you a Hannibal fanboy? I just, I buying all the clothes and, and uh, yeah, the straight jacket that, uh, you yeah, know, the mask. Was, yeah, yeah. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's a great film. Sansa Lambs. Yeah. As you say, Not like, so all, the, all the, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, it's just a really... It's the one with the death of the moth, isn't it? And yeah, where he rams them down their throat. Yeah. Which, if you look on the uh, DVD cover, it's obviously the moth, and the moth has the skull on it. If you look at the skull, it's actually a bunch of naked women. That old, that old ditty. Yeah, do you know that? I think so, yeah, but I mean, that picture's an older picture anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, an old it's pink, like a replication of it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you want some secret so, so... porn, then uh, <laughs> DVD 
DVD cover of Science Slams and a magnifying glass. <laughs> you can thwack your way all night and nobody Jesus. will know what's going on. Yeah, like Although it would covers. be a bit creepy if they didn't know the si- there's naked women in the school and someone catches <laughs> just cracking one out to sign a Slams DVD box set. <laughs> But well, um, that's why it's a secret porn. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. In many ways, I think that porn would be better in that case. <laughs> Just use porn. <laughs> um, uh, that was a joke actually on um, on what's it called? Uh, Eight out of ten cats does count down. Like the girl was saying, like how this two T Mobile hack, uh, it turned out to be like this fourteen year old in Ireland, didn't it? And like she was saying, like all oh, these upper Brit- upper class crimes you know these white people crimes you know you've got to go in and actually say like i hope you're on porn in there instead of hacking t-mobile and stuff like <laughs> all right that. well there you go in um, case you missed eight out of ten cats this week <laughs> there we get the best joke for you yeah yeah no? I, th- I thought it was the best one good well there you go anything else to, any other things you've seen you'd like to recreate <laughs> i was going to talk about hannibal some more but well have you got anything insightful to say no no, no. Oh, okay bye everyone <laughs>